Hello everybody, it's Kevin with me, myself, and my vinyl. Uh, I'm just doing a contest entry for Aaron and Mutha Alamares VCLT contest. Uh, I believe it ends April 1st. Could be a joke. Maybe extends it. Maybe he's done with it already. I don't know. Um, but he says it's done April 1st, so I'm trying to get it in. Um, I think you still, today's the 23rd as of right now. So you still got another week to get it in. Um, so basically showing your VCLT or he even says, if you have never received it, you just show some vinyl finds, which, you know, I think it's great. Uh, I think this is kind of an anti contest, if you will, but his prizes are pretty cool. He's trying to pay it forward to a bunch of people out there. Um, even if some people who, you know, leave comments, but don't necessarily make videos, which, Hey, that's cool too. Um, you're still part of the VC, you know? Uh, I was that way for the longest time and actually a contest got me jumping into making videos and here I am making videos. So, um, <clears throat> I'm going to start with, uh, something that I received from, uh, JC at the flip side with JC. Um, I've only received two VC LTs and this was the first one that I've ever received, uh, from someone in the vinyl community. And that is, uh, Rest Never Sleeps by Neil Young, Crazy Horse. He's a big Neil Young fan. I've been recently getting into it. Uh, this, I think, is my third album by them. Or Neil Young that I've, I actually own. Um, he sent me this. Uh, it is a fantastic record. Um, you know, this is, this is something that uh, I've been listening to quite a bit. And he even, he knows I'm a guy that likes, you know, kind of came on my own in the 90s and with grunge music and that sort of thing. I was in middle school, high school. And he claims that one of the songs on here is the beginning of grunge music. And I couldn't uh, agree more. And it's, uh, when you hear it, it's called Sedan Delivery. And it is a fantastic tune. And, you know, Neil Young, I mean, this, this is, this is great. He's got some stuff coming out recently. Um, well, I'm probably not going to pick it up into the gold rush or, uh, after the gold rush, excuse me for a hundred bucks, but he's got a lot of stuff coming out. Um, anyway, so number two is from the man himself, Aaron with Alamir. And I just received this and I posted a video that I think in either my last video, the video before last, um, doing a VCLT and, you know, I've been trying to get through it and digest it. I haven't had a whole lot of time to listen to music re recently. But um, <clears throat> a lot of the stuff he sent me is stuff that I, I didn't own, but I know because it's in my, my wheelhouse. But um, he sent me Rage Against the Machine, The Battle of Los Angeles. Um, this might be their best album. Uh, I think it was actually the, not their last, but their second to last. It came out in 1999. I used to listen to this all the time when I was working out. Uh, it just, it got me going. So that's the battle of Los Angeles. Um, I mean, come on, everything on here is killer. I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to pick one track out because they're, I, I love them all. I really do. Uh, the second thing he sent me was sublime self-titled. Okay. This came out shortly after Brad Noel, who is pictured here, uh, with the tattoo. Um, this is you know, he, he died of a, you know, drug overdose, um, before the band kind of really hit. And this has a ton of great songs on here. You know, Sublime, I think is a, it's hit or miss for a lot of people. It's probably missed for a lot of people that didn't grow up in that area, but this is, you know, a gatefold. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love this album. I really do. It's, it was well, on heavy rotation for me as a kid. Um, I say kid when I was high school, you know, and, and a lot of kids, a lot of people for that, uh, for that time period. Um, this is one that I've only given one listen to, but, um, one of my favorite bands and it's in that era, 95 Pearl Jam. This is a bootleg, um, self pollution radio broadcast. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff off of, uh, um, 
Vitology. So I think it came out after, right after Vitology. But this is this is great too. This was on Bad Joker, and I think it was limited to like 500 copies. So uh, super excited to get this. I mean, I think I said it in my last video. Look how hard Jeff and Eddie are working. They're getting after it. They're shirtless. Well, at least Jeff is. Um, I don't know if Jeff goes shirtless anymore at shows. It's only been like almost 30 years, but, <laughs> uh, 30, yeah, 30 years. Holy crap. I'm, I'm getting old, but there's Eddie and Jeff getting after it. And then lastly, this has been one that I've been trying to digest, you know, been giving it a couple of, of, of listens. This is one that I've been listening to the most recently, and that is Hater. Okay, Hater is a band that I missed. I definitely missed this growing up. Um, I'm not exactly sure when it, this particular album came out. This is a 2016 uh, reissue. But there's so much going on here. And I can understand why Aaron sent this to me. And he's like, I do. I love this album. But uh, you got so many things going on here. I got a little bit of notes just because I've been listening to it and trying to digest it. And the whole side one is just all over the place with musical um, kind of tastes and you can kind of see where their uh their influences came from uh and let me just tell the first track is called mono bone jack on now when they start singing it and singing it as a <laughs> in the lyrics it kind of gets quicker and it actually uh mono bone jack on like it's kind of a punk song and in the, in the fact that like the way they sing it they kind of blend the words together and the lyrics. It's kind of like a punk song. It's kind of funny. It's kind of stupid. Like a lot of punk songs are just kind of like, um, they kind of a joke. Like the music itself is not a joke, but like kind of lyrics kind of, they're just having fun with it. So, um, it's definitely got shades of punk. Who do I kill is the second track. And, um, that kind of that kind of almost kind of gives you a little glimpse into what they're getting at, and then top finder. Uh, when I was listening to this, you know who came into my mind was like the Kinks, the Kinks, and like the Rolling Stones kind of popped in my head like at times when I was listening to this track. So uh, Lion and Lamb is an instrumental, and it totally changes like the first three tracks, and it just kind of flips the whole album from where it was going onto its side and it's almost kind of like a Beatles album or a Beatles song where you know they're singing and then all of a sudden it just changes it just changes and this is an instrumental uh it's very light it's very harmonic uh and it kind of just flips the album and then the next song Roadside is kind of gets that sludginess like that you get in that grunge era this came out you know, early 90s, originally, like I said, I don't know exactly what year, but, and then side two is straight up, like, pretty much grunge, except for, again, you go down, down under shoe, circles, putrid, it's kind of like, like that sludginess, a little bit like grunge, um, a little bit, a little bit dark, uh, feel to it, and then you hit blistered, and it's like a country song, it's like, country like picking kind of almost like a banjo um picking the guitar and it's like country or even rockabilly it's a really fun song to listen to and then sad mcbain closes it out and it is just pure in your face just kind of grunge music and i don't know if they made a second album but this was definitely like where they're leading off and jumping off to um members of the band uh, ben Shepard, John Waterman, uh, Brian Wood, which is Andrew Wood's brother who passed away. Um, he was in Mother Love Bone with a bunch of guys that were in Pearl Jam. Uh, and then you got uh, John McBain on guitar, which sad McBain. I, don't, I mean, that's probably that's got to be some kind of connection there. I haven't looked too deep into it. Maybe it's about his dad or maybe it's about his grandfather. or You know, maybe it's his alter ego. Who knows? I haven't looked into it. Um, and then the last one is Matt Cameron on drums. And 
you can tell it's Matt Cameron. He has a very specific sound and style that, I mean, you can sound garden, Pearl, you know, and then eventually Pearl Jam, Matt Cameron was there and Matt Cameron is just, uh, I mean, he's a great drummer in my opinion. So anyway, that's my VCLT. Um, I do have some other things that I want to get in, in, into in another video. And it's just basically stuff that has been given to me. Um, my mom gave me her collection that she had left over. Uh, I will do a video about that. And then part two is probably going to be just something about like people who have given me stuff, handed it to me, not VCLT, but running a little long at 11 minutes. But, uh, you know, Aaron, I love you, man. Rock on.